Uh, this called to order for the Planning Commission meeting in City Hall Council Chambers, Columbia Heights, Wednesday, August 4th, 6 p.m. The uh, admittance information for the public, members of the public who wish to attend may so by attending in person by calling 1-312-626-6799 and entering meeting ID 810-9064. 1596 passcode 978860 or by zoom at super long link I won't be able to read uh, for questions please call community development at 763-706-3670 uh, a call to order and roll call uh, Commissioner Vargas here uh, Kaiser here William here Nowitzki here Wolf here here in Dino and so now not present uh, next, uh, could we get a motion to approve the minutes from last month's uh, July 6 Planning Commission meetings? I'll make, I'll make a motion. A motion. I second. A uh, motion by Commissioner Wolf, seconded by Commissioner Nowitzki. Um, minutes approved. Um, I'll need oh. a, roll, a verbal roll call. Um, you don't have to do a roll call. So, well, I'll oh. in favor. Now, uh, can we go, uh, vote to approve the minutes from the July 6 meeting? Uh, ayes, uh, aye, aye, nays, ayes have it. Uh, on to public hearings, uh, number two, item number two. Uh, it's a, a variance to allow for the construction of an attached garage with front yard setback encroachments located at 4161 Polk Street Northeast. Uh, a motion to move to waive the reading of the draft solution. Oh, uh, yeah. She's gonna present. That's your turn. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Chair Mark, and thank you, Commissioners, for being present tonight. Um, I had a script. Okay, tonight's public hearing is for a variance to allow for the construction of a detached garage in the front yard of a residential property with encroachments into the front yard setback for the residents located at 4161 Polk Street Northeast. The site was originally developed with frontage and access off of Polk Street and even the address as well. However, by current city code definition, a corner lot's front lot line shall be the shortest dimension on a public street. In this case, the property line that abuts 42nd Avenue is the lot's true frontage. A detached single car garage currently exists in the front of the property with driveway access off of Polk Street. Variances may be granted when the applicant for the variance establishes that there are practical difficulties in complying with the zoning ordinance. Current city code stipulates that no accessory structure shall be constructed or located within any front yard and that accessory structures with, uh, for one and two family dwellings shall be behind the principal structure building line in the front yard. Additionally, a 25-foot front yard setback shall be maintained for residential buildings in the R2A zone. The current detached garage as it exists is located in front of the main dwelling and encroaches into the front yard setback. The development of this lot does not provide reasonable space for the construction of a standard garage behind the principal structure's front building line. This is an existing condition not caused by the current owner. The proposed new garage would be oriented in the same fashion and will be served by the existing and proposed to be expanded driveway accessed from Polk Street. The comprehensive plan calls for reinvestment, renovation, and modernization of the city's single-family housing stock. The granting of this variance will result in a new functioning two-car garage for the property that will enhance the overall functionality and aesthetic of the site. It will also provide more adequate on-site parking that conforms to current setback requirements and contributes to improved value of the neighborhood. One neighboring resident reached out to the city two weeks ago in support of the variance application, stating that the construction of a new garage would improve the property as well as the neighborhood and community as a whole. No comments of opposition were received by city staff. The variance shall be conditioned to allow for a 7.8 foot front yard encroachment for a new standard garage. It shall comply with building code stormwater regulations as well as all other city zoning codes pertaining to residential accessory structures. 
staff recommends that the planning commission recommend approval to the city council of this proposed variance. Um, and we have the applicant and owner here, uh, Jordan Stork, on the line, and we're available for any questions that you may have. Usually it's questions from the, uh, panel, from the panel at this point. Uh, any questions from any of the commissioners um, subject to the information given so far? Yeah, the, the, this idea of right of way, or not right of way, the, the front yard being the shortest, intuitively, shouldn't the front yard be the longest? So many city codes actually cite that the shortest property line abutting a public street, or like a, let's say an easement, the the shortest access point is well, is the not property. defining front yard as where the front door is. No, they're just defining it. So as. most zoning codes, because they, we talk about lot lines, and then the yards are based off where those lot lines are, right? So in, in you, it's. it's his address is on bulk. Correct. And well, that's the front yard. I think that dates back to because, oh, well, that to that ideology of, well, we built the house with the door facing Polk, therefore the address will be Polk and the access will be Polk. Well, However, it be, it would, I mean, if you look at this lot, it wouldn't make sense to try to put the front yard to the shortest. I mean, as it is today, but if it was constructed from scratch, Let's say this lot was never developed, and today yeah. uh, someone came in and said, "I want to build a house." Right. We we would say, "Well, you got to make it work with the front facing Polk." If they show us, oh, sorry, forty second. If they show us that it's absolutely completely impossible to build a house functioning to our zoning code facing forty second, then they'd come in with a variance, but they'd have to show us how it couldn't work. As you see how the lot is laid right now, what's red is what's existing, right? That's the existing home and that's the existing garage. Then the white is the proposed attached garage. So you can kind of fade it out in your mind for a second. The only other space for a garage, because there's no uh, functioning alley here, would be the southwest corner, but it wouldn't be enough, right? It would, it would, it would be way too close to, that, uh, to the public street there. So we, let's say you, and if you, because we, we have a minimum of 20 by 20, and if we shadow in a 20 by 20 garage there in that southwest corner, it wouldn't be enough. So that is exhausting the options. If you put it where you were saying, then it would be encroaching on the front. I mean, right now it's supposed to be behind the front of the yard, right? Or the front of the house. The behind the front. Right, right, where your arrow was. That's the front of the house, right my here. definition. The garage, front of the garage is supposed to be behind that line, right? But by our definition, this is the front of the house okay. because it's what's parallel right. to. I know, it's silly. And this is a this one is a special case because it's a corner lot with its functioning side being the f shorter line, which is the front for us. So, so related to the, the lot line length and some language in the packet regarding duplexes, having to have one address facing one street, another address facing the other street if it's on a corner lot. Mm -hmm. We should have some language if we approve or disapprove it commenting on that because if the home has this garage and then someday do, is turned into a duplex because it is R2A, that it's going to be in violation of the own code that, it, you know. That so we would, in that case, we would, the city creates an address and notifies all the agencies about it. So if this, and, I, and this is a little bit irrelevant at this time because they're just looking for a garage, but yes, theoretically, if this property were to convert into a duplex, which it may not qualify based off the size of the lot, uh, but if it did, we would just simply create uh, two addresses, one on Polk and one on 42nd. However, it would still need to meet the building setbacks if the fr as if the front yard is 42nd. Does that make sense? So they, would con they can construct it, they can do additions to it, like let's say, for example, they can make additions to the southeast corner, fill that in, maybe, do, maybe build above, whatever it may be, but they would still be bound to the setbacks prescribed to the R2A zone as if 42nd is the front. In this case, yes, the front is always the more, is usually the most restricting setback and it's the least budged, right? Not many jurisdictions budge for the front yard setback. In this case, as you can see, the existing garage already encroaches that odd front yard setback. 
and the new proposed garage only asks for a little bit more in order to have a full standard garage with an operable door to fit two cars. And in this case, it is attached. So, which gets me to the actual dimensions that are provided in the packet. Um, I think there's a comment that there's uh, 928 square feet, and when I do the math of a 40 by 28 taking out 60 square feet, it's uh, 1,056 square feet. I don't know if that's just an oversight or me bad mathing. So there are part portions of this addition attach of addition of an attached garage that are parsed out as pantry and bathroom, which is an addition to the main home. Uh, the applicant chose to show that as part of the plan. Um, of the exact, so if we get down to the nitty gritty, what the city is looking at most at this time is that it does not exceed a thousand square feet of garage space. So it may be off a few feet, square feet based off the configuration of the uh, other attached elements, but the project is conditioned so that the garage may not exceed 1,000 square feet. And at the building permit phase, it will be, again, sh you know, shown and, and calculated accurately. There was many renderings of this plan, and we fi we're finally here today. I think we received this project back in May, and we asked for the extension, a 60-day extension because we wanted to get it just right. So there may be elements in there that that site, the old square footage versus the new square footage. We might be off a few feet based off the attached portion of it. But in at the building permit phase, it will be 100% the accurate number, and it will be less than 1,000 square feet. So again, this is for a garage addition, and then if 1,000 square feet of it is garage, the other remainder is a home addition, which is a whole other set of permits and you yeah, know building electrical yeah, but that's not but that's variance. not that's not the variance is asking so if we if we summarize it the variance is essentially asking for an encroachment into the front yard setback and the allowance of the location of the garage being in front of the building's front property line so that addition whether they move forward with it or not to the main home is irrelevant to this um, only because it's not encroaching, right? It's not in violation. It would, yes, it would be subject to additional building permits and, and different types of inspections. Um, but what we want to make sure of and how it's conditioned is that if they were to say, you know what, I don't like it's Jordan, so I'm, I'm talking about him as if he's not with us. Um, if the bathroom and the pantry were not there, he, and he said, you know, we're not going to move forward with it, actually, I want to make that more garage space, I'm going to go back to the conditions and say, okay, well, you got to show me and make sure that this is less than 1,000 square feet. I think that kind of uh, sums the, answers my question. Uh, Stan, is that sufficient for you? Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any any other questions? Okay. Um, uh, any other comments from the public, or uh, can we hear from Jordan himself? Jordan, if you want to unmute yourself and say a few words, you're more than welcome to. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically. Uh, just based on the the previous garage being already in the front yard and already in front of the, uh, the house. Um, I'm just hoping to, you know, replace this single car garage with a larger two car garage. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it from my side. Okay. Any further comment from any of the board members? Nope. nope. At this point, uh, I guess I have some comments and concern about this, the language in the survey documents and the legal description. Um, they contradict the publicly available information for the, uh, for the lot and block. I mean, these are minor details, but uh, calling it block or lot three block 16 is what it was. It was a, a combination of lot three and four turned in there and possibly some other, and, and there's no indication of a replat in the survey documents provided in this package so i mean real really kind of minor ideas the main gist of the survey is is excellently detailed it's just perhaps a second look at the uh, legal description to make sure it it describes this property and not his neighbor's house because uh no, absolutely. Thank you for looking into that. We will ensure that at the at the building permit submittal that the certificate of survey does cite the correct uh, legal description of the property. Um, any further questions, comments? Close the public hearing. 
Uh, at this time, we uh, well, I, I have one more comment, <laughs> and I, I'm looking at the the eaves on the garage and the way that they're proposed in these drawings, the eaves are shedding water right onto the house. And with this metal style roof that I see uh, being identified as the roof of choice, you're, you're going to have moisture problems on the north side of your current house with that type of design. I know there's other designs that will allow you to have that footprint, but the, the one that's provided on sheet 20 of the documents, uh, it, it, it's, it's probably not going to fly unless there's some type of uh, vapor barrier or moisture control system that goes between houses but I, I'm not familiar with that in a residential right. capacity yeah so um, at this point I just wanted to get something on paper in terms of the variance I know I'm gonna need to contact a, a roofing contractor uh, to make sure I get there's probably gonna be need to be like a, a valley sort of you know, draining between the two or a cricket that there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things that I'll have to look at with a professional. Sure. Yeah. And thanks for, thanks for looking into that as well. The project has been conditioned by our engineering department to direct all stormwater runoff to the street. How he makes that happen is on his end. And then we'll have our engineers reviewing the plans to ensure that that's what the case is when the building plans come in. Cause it's true at, you, it's, there's a difference between design and function, right? Again, to uh, back to the metal roof, the the metal that's used in that type of roofing is incompatible with uh, galvanized metals, and uh, a lot of these crickets that you talked about use galvanized metals. So make sure you really scrutinize your uh, contractor or your uh, architect designer. I, I would go with an architect designer, somebody that has a little bit of a science education to make sure that you. Otherwise, you're just going to have uh, erosion and it'll rot and corrode faster. So, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's it for me. Uh, I'd like to close the public hearing right now, if that's okay. Uh, closed. Um, and then can we take a is it time to move to vote for the approval of the? I'll move to waive the reading of the draft resolution. Right. Because I don't want to do it. I have to say because there's plenty of copies available or whatever. Second. Uh, I hope nobody can tell that I'm winging this, but uh, we have a motion to waive the reading and, and a motion to second. Uh, at this time, is it possible to take a vote? To all in favor. All in favor. Ayes. Aye. 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 Nays. And so I'll no, and now I'll move to recommend the Planning Commission recommend the City Council approve the variance of the proposed attached garage located at. 4161 Polk Street Northeast, subject to a whole lot of conditions here. I see 14 on one page. 16 conditions. But these people get to worry about, right? I'll second that. Uh, motion passes. Um, all in favor? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Ayes. Opposed. Opposed. Nays. The eyes have it. Um, I guess let's just get this That's is the public end of the public hearing portion. That is the end of the public portion of the great, hearing. Mark, don't let us pressure you. <laughs> yeah. Jordan, uh, just to fill you in, Mark is our vice chair. Yeah. So he's well, not I'm used sure. to uh, writing. Uh, the English movie. is my second language. I mostly just stutters <laughs> and pops, but uh, I'm working yeah, on this, that. Is this normally Jason, how these right? meetings go? <laughs> <laughs> no. Jordan. It's Jordan. 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 I'm the last sorry. Good luck, Jordan. Jordan. By the way, Jordan, uh, my, my aunt and uncle own 4210, and I, I shovel over there in the winter. So, And I, I spoke to them before the meeting, and they're all in favor of you getting a, a new garage. So. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Best of luck. Thanks. Okay, in other business, <laughs> um, we did not receive any applications for planning, uh, for planning applications for this upcoming month. However, I might be putting through an ordinance change to you guys and it involves landscaping and tree preservation. I'm going to try really hard, but I'm on the council level. I, I am working on revamping our entire intoxicating liquor license laws <laughs> and the restriction of flavored tobacco. So I'm trying to squeeze one in. It is going to be a September meeting the day after 
Labor Day, so if it doesn't, I'm not going to be too upset, and I'm sure you guys won't either. Um, otherwise, we'll put that forward and maybe another project if anything comes in in September um, and, uh, for the October meeting. So that's, the, that's what's coming up. We have no private development projects coming up soon, um, as far as I know, um, but we do have an ordinance change that we'll, I'll be working with Public Works on regarding landscaping regulations for private properties and tree preservations so that people in are incentivized or are kind of required to plant trees when they develop. That sounds great. Yeah, it should be good. We've been working on it for a while, but I told them I have too many private development projects right now, so let me finish these up, and then when it slows down, we'll work on the ordinance stuff, and here we are. So that's that. So maybe not in September, but definitely in October is what, I, what I'll let you guys know. And then any questions for us? We're just trekking along in our small little department. <laughs> Didn't make 15 minutes just for a record. I'll I know. I can't <laughs> Someone had to double it. Sorry. <laughs> Too many episodes of Columbo. I can't help myself once I start asking questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, with that. Well, if you guys have nothing else to say. Second. A motion, second uh, uh, meeting adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm left-handed.